This year, we'll see the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, and there's going to be a lot of looking back at what happened back then. Ruthie Zell has a story about a St. Louisan who didn't go to war, but who had a lot to say about it, with very few words. When the United States entered World War II, St. Louis sprang into action. This is total war, everybody's war. Into the pockets of Americans, this war production is pouring $100 million a day. Area manufacturers shifted gears, devoting much of its production of everything from airplanes to shoes and food toward the U.S. military. Over at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, one of America's most important editorial cartoonists was drawing powerful images condemning the war machines of the Japanese Empire and Nazi Germany. Daniel Fitzpatrick was a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner who worked at the Post-Dispatch from 1913 to 1958. His work was syndicated in 35 newspapers across the country. More than 1,700 of his original drawings were donated to the State Historical Society of Missouri. Fitzpatrick's war drawings are the subject of a year-long three-part exhibit titled Battle Lines at the Center for Missouri Studies Art Gallery in Columbia. This is the second part, and this is the U.S. enters the war. So our first part dealt with the early part of the war before the United States entered it, and this exhibit deals with that period immediately after the United States entered the war and the years afterwards. Curator Joan Stack. This one marks the entrance of Germany into the fray. The United States declared war on Japan on December 8th, but they didn't know if they were at war against Germany until Hitler declared that they were. Hitler declared war on the United States on December 11th, and of course Congress followed suit and declared war on Germany. So this is called Hands Across the World. It shows Germany and Japan sig heiling with blood-stained hands across this image of the globe. Now a few days later, an alliance was formed with, between Russia, Britain, China, and the United States to fight the Axis powers. And so this is a little bit more of a positive cartoon, Other Hands Across the World, which ran on December 13th. And it shows the hands united in the fight against the Axis powers. This one I thought was really interesting because it reflects the importance of Mexico entering World War II. A lot of people don't even know that Mexico participated in World War II, but they entered the war as an ally of the United States. So this marks when Mexico joined the alliance, and this ran on May 27, 1942. And what the artist has shown is a variation of the Great Seal of Mexico, which shows an eagle on a cactus uh, with a rattlesnake in its beak and, and talon but now it has a, a strange little swastika-shaped snake with the face of Adolf Hitler on it. Perhaps the most powerful cartoon in the whole show is this one, at Gateway to Stalingrad, and it's just a powerful graphic image of the horror of war. It is about Stalingrad, which was one of the largest battles in the history of warfare, over a million casualties. In the end, it was a, a defeat for the Nazis. An editorial cartoonist must put on a show every day. It may be a drama, a comedy, or a satire. In 1960, a recently retired Daniel Fitzpatrick was featured in a series of documentary essays produced by KETC. In the final installment of 45 Years with Fitzpatrick, the man called America's Dean of Editorial Cartooning spoke with host Joseph Passano about his creative process. Fitz, one time you told me that uh, the difference between um, uh, editorial writing and editorial cartooning a uh, lay in the difference in language. Well, that's true uh, because the uh, editorial writer uses words and the editorial cartoonist uses pictures, and they're quite different. For instance, uh, I was thinking of a, this phrase of uh, super patriots wrapping themselves in the flag, and uh, there was a politician that I was, was doing that, and I made a rough sketch of it, as I always do, 
before I make a finished drawing. And it looked like a desecration of the national emblem, so I just pitched it. Here I thin out a line that got too broad by using white as an eraser. We're practically through now, except for the all-important caption. The work of editorial cartoonists reflect the times in which they are created. Fitzpatrick's war-era work was published between 1939 and 1945. Do his cartoons still resonate today? I think it resonates differently. Uh, back then, they didn't know what was going to happen next. These cartoons were both reflected the mood of the era, and they also influenced the way people understood the war as it was happening. Today, they help us to better understand that period of our history. And also, there are universal messages in some of these images that remind us of the horror of war in general. I think it's a different sort of uh, experience that the viewer has, but I think it's a very important one.